Hello again, my fellow pilots and my fellow aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is always Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Today we are going to continue uh, our uh, article, Don't delay you as a pilot or as an aircraft maintenance personnel. You need not to delay the engine fire procedure. It is a red ECAM alert and it need immediate action. And it need immediate action everybody okay so in our first part we uh, talk about the incidents that do happen and the pilot delays the procedure for engine fire and the situation become more worse and uh, even if the pilot extinguish the two agent or two fire bottles the situation become worse and the delay take us to a very bad scenario okay so in this part, part two of our article, Don't Delay the Engine Fire Procedure, we are going to continue with the two types of engine fire. Two types of engine fire. Okay. So everybody, you need to take care. There are two types of engine fire. The gas turbine engine, your turbofan engine, may suffer from two types of fire. Engine fire or nacelle fire, external fire, and the tail pipe fire, backfire, or core fire. Okay. Their procedure are totally different. Their extinguish procedure are totally different. Their location are totally different. And you don't need to do the mistake of having a report of a tail pipe fire and you do the procedure of engine fire in case of engine or nacelle fire everybody engine or nacelle fire you do the isolations and fire extinguish all the steps you are you are going to do at the beginning of fire procedure are isolation isolation sound isolation ventilation isolation fuel isolation fadic hydraulic pneumatic idj de-energize uh, air conditioning and then you need to extinguish the fire bottles so in case of engine or nacelle fire everybody you are going to go to the engine fire panel engine fire panel but on the other side everybody tail pipe fire or internal fire what is the procedure you will do isolations and fire extinguish no only will do isolation fuel isolation shut down the engine but the solution for the tail by fire is a dry cranking or dry motoring everybody. Dry cranking or dry motoring everybody. Okay. So, why Airbus here in their uh, uh, issue of the safety article, they need to speak about the two types of engine fire. Because it happened regularly, pilots and aircraft maintenance people, uh, are always do mistake of having a report of a tail pipe or internal fire and they do the procedure of engine fire so airbus elected to uh, explain uh, entirely the difference between these two types of fire and explain that their procedure to extinguish are totally different everybody okay so as you can see here everybody there are two types of engine fire an engine fire or nacelle fire, which is an external one, happening and locating in the nacelle between the engine cowl and the engine case. And the other type is a tail by fire, is an internal or core fire coming from the core of the engine, aft of the engine. You will see a fire propagate from the end of the engine, as you can see here. So fire here is located in the nacelle. Fire here is coming from the aft part of the engine aft part of the engine the main source for an engine or nacelle fire is a flammable fluid leak hydraulic pipe fuel pipe or oil pipe leak in the nacelle in a sensitive area of the engine and also this area having a very high temperature so this flammable fluid when leaked it auto ignites and cause an engine fire so again the main source of an engine fire is a flammable fluid leak but on the other side the main cause of a tail by fire 
is an excess of fuel bored inside the combustion chamber after engine shutdown or at during engine start. And this is another difference between engine and tail by fire. Engine or nacelle fire may happening on ground or in flight, but on the other side, tail pipe or internal fire will only happen during engine start or shutdown on ground only. On ground only. The procedure to extinguish an engine or nacelle fire, it is an isolation and fire extinguish. But the procedure to extinguish a tail by fire is a dry cranking or dry motoring or what we call ventilation of the engine. You just need the starter to engage with N2 to having the fan work and having air, suck air to blow out this fire and external fuel, excess of fuel in the combustion chamber. Okay, everybody. So as you can see here, everybody, engine fire, it's also called the nacelle fire or external fire. An engine fire affects the external part of the engine core, but is contained within the engine nacelle. So that is called the nacelle fire. This type of fire can occur on ground or in flight and is usually caused by malfunction or rupture of a component or pipe which contain flammable liquid, example fuel, oil, or hydraulic fluid. So the main cause of an engine fire is a flammable fluid leak. Flammable fluid leak. So when this liquid come into contact with hot surface on the engine case, which is called the sensitive area of the engine, okay, such as the high pressure compressor, combustor, or turbine, they can self-ignite and cause a fire. Sensitive area of the engine are always located by the manufacturer and having the, uh, uh, and having the detector loop located in that area to detect an engine fire and give an indication in the cockpit. So also for engine or nacelle fire, we do have indication in the cockpit. Maybe like six indication, master warning, CRC, Master warning, CRC, fire indication come underneath the master lever of the affected engine. Engine fire procedure come up on the upper E-cam. Nacelle temperature come on the lower E-cam. Okay, everybody, nacelle temperature come on the lower E-cam. And the fire push button on the fire panel eliminate in red. Okay, everybody, so this type of engine fire can also be caused by rupture of a part of the engine core causing damage to component and pipes which can lead to a fire in this type of fire please don't delay the fire procedure the engine fire protection system will detect the fire and trigger the red engine x fire ecam alert red ecam alert need immediate action engine fire or left engine fire or right engine fire according to the type of the aircraft and on the airbus 8220 Aircraft as a flight crew must apply the associated engine fire procedure without delay. Apply the engine fire procedure without delay. And if you remember everybody, we have two detector loops running in the nacelle, loop A and loop B. And only the engine fire indication will come on an AND gate. Both loops must detect a fire. Or loop A fire, loop B fault or loop B fire, loop A fault, or loop A and loop B fire, sorry, loop A and loop B fault within short time, within short time. Okay, everybody? Okay. So, the engine fire, so as you can see here, the engine fire on a cell fire has indication, external, you do isolations and fire extinguish, it happen on ground or in flight, it happen on ground or in flight. Okay, everybody. And it's totally different from the tail by fire. Let's see the tail by fire here. Tail by fire, as I told you, may be called internal fire or back fire. Okay. A tail by fire occurs inside the engine core from an excess of fuel inside the combustion chamber or turbine. This type of fire will only occur during the engine start or shutdown sequence, only on ground. And the tail by fire occur when the engine rotates at a very low speed and residual fuel is present 
excess of fuel residual fuel in the combustion chamber or turbine area or if there is an oil leak in the tailpipe of the engine or if there is an oil leak in the tailpipe of the engine like the bearing sump at the aft of the engine fail and oil leak at the tail of the engine so also this oil may ignite and cause a tail by fire the risk of a tail by fire is higher in the case of a second engine start attempt because residual fuel may remain in the engine after the first attempt engine start okay so tail by fire has no indication inside the cockpit and the only indication that may arise high EGT rise high EGT rise but high EGT rise and having the EGT over limit is not the main indication for a tail by fire you as a pilot or as an aircraft maintenance by having a high EGT or an over limit over temp of the engine it is not the main indication for a tail by fire so what is the main indication of a tail by fire everybody is a visual report visual report cabin crew the tower or the ground mechanic indicate the fire by his eyes and send to you an indication into the cockpit okay everybody because the fire detection system does not detect the tail by fire fire detection system will only detect an engine fire because they occur inside the hot section of the engine core and therefore are outside of the fire detection zone and the flight crew can detect tail by fire by observing any abnormal increase in EGT during the engine start sequence or if the EGT does not decrease after engine shutdown. So yes, the EGT can be a good indication for a tail by fire. But the main indication is a visual report. The main indication is a visual report. As you can see here, ground crew, cabin crew, or air traffic controller may also observe a tail by fire and must inform the flight crew on the communication system so that by this visual report, you have the authority and you have it is a responsibility to do dry cranking procedure. Dry cranking procedure. Okay, everybody? So, in the case of a tail by fire, the flight crew must apply the engine tail by fire abnormal procedure from the quick reference handbook, which call for ventilation of the engine, dry cranking and the dry motoring. And this will ventilate the engine and the airflow will extinguish the fire and remove any residual fuel or fuel vapor from the engine. On the A220, a tail by fire procedure is under study to be introduced in the QRH and the flight crew operating manual. Dry cranking is important because it cools down the engine, uh, switch off the ignition system, and blow out the fire or residual fuel. And as you can see here, everybody, after any tail by fire, inspection by maintenance is required to check that there is no flame damage to the flaps, wing, or pylon area. Again, after any tail by fire inspection by maintenance is required to check that there is no flame damage to the flaps, wing, or pylon area. Or pylon area. Okay, everybody? Okay. So, thank you always for your good listening, my fellow pilots and my fellow aircraft maintenance personnel. This was part two of the Airbus safety article, don't delay the engine fire procedure. Don't delay the engine fire procedure. Please stay tuned for part three. In part three, we are going to continue this safety article, okay, to increase the awareness of the pilots and aircraft maintenance people regarding fire situation and to uh, have a good knowledge regarding engine fire procedure, everybody. So thank you always for your good listening. Always fly safely and maintain your aircraft very safely. From Cairo, Egypt, your host was Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Please don't hesitate to comment on this video, add value. And remember, this is not an official training. This is an added value, performance training, performance add training for my fellow pilots and my fellow aircraft maintenance personnel. So please don't use 
for maintenance and for aircraft operation and always rely on your formal manuals on your formal manuals thank you and i will meet you again very soon bye bye